All right, John Oaks here with Hangsters Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. And today, coming out of our showroom, we have this addition to our inventory, a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle SS396. Now this car is all numbers matching, um, so we're going to go over it front to back, we'll do our walk around, and then as we always do, go underneath it to show you the complete underside of the car. So as you can see, our Chevelle here done in the Gobi beige exterior color here. Uh, again, the paint's nice, smooth, and shiny all the way around. As you can see, it's got the black stripes in, up over the hood and down the, pack, or the uh, trunk lid on the car. Now as far as the panels and fitment and so forth, as we walk around, you'll see how well everything fits on this car. And all of the bright work too, all of your bumpers, all of the wheelet moldings, drip rail moldings, all of that stuff, even around the windows, all of that is in great condition on this car too. So as you can see, ours does come with the uh, wheelet moldings here, nicely polished up, good and straight. As far as wheels and tires, They've elected to keep with the rally style wheels on it. They are in great shape. They're 15 eighths all the way around with the beauty rings and the center caps all there. As far as tires, BF Goodrich Radial TA tires. This is a popular choice along the muscle car crew and street riders around. It's a good tire, got good tread on them. And again, just very popular, good performance out of those BF Goodriches. 21570 R15s up front. 235 70s R15s on the back of the car. Uh, as you can see, we've got the SS 396 emblems here on the front fenders, up on the cowl, which by the way is a steel functional cowl. Um, you can see it's got the cowl induction up there as well. As far as our doors go, I talked about the fitment and panel alignment here briefly. We'll see it here now. So you can see your gaps here to the back side as well as up front here, very uniform front to back. Elevations are dead on, so they're matching really good with your front fenders and your quarter panels. And all of the body lines are in alignment on the car too. So everything all looks aesthetically very good on this car. Now this car does have mirror on the driver's side. It is a chrome mirror. It's got the glass in it, all of which is in good shape. No pitting on the chrome. Glass is in great condition. Drip rail moldings, as I had mentioned here, part of our bright work here. Those are in great shape. Again, this has the black vinyl top on it, all of which is in good condition. The stitching all along the seams here in great condition. As we feel all the way around the very bottom edges of it, nice and smooth. You don't feel any bumps underneath that top. And then also, I always like to run my finger through the rain gutter here to make sure that is nice and smooth. And it is. Also, you can see the glass here. Obviously, it's slightly tinted. Uh, there's no chips or cracks in any of the glass, neither in the door glass nor in the quarter window glass either. And again, your door handles, those are chromed, but again, no pitting whatsoever. Those look in really good shape. Now, we will open this up and take a look to the inside. It's all black interior. Now, they did upgrade the seats with a set of TMI front bucket seats, very comfortable seats along with the headrest. It does have some side bolstering there that helps keep you into the seat. Again, they're not far off from what factor would have been, but if you look at the back seat as well, they've matched the upholstery on those very, very well. So everything goes good in this car. The dash itself is in great shape. It's factory dash. You can see the SS steering wheel there, factory heater controls in there as well, factory instrumentation, and you've got the factory automatic center concert console in there also, along with that his and her or the horseshoe shaped shifter in there. So that is uh, pretty much it for the interior of your car. You do have the black carpeting, which is in great shape, and you've got the uh, front and rear seat belts in this car too. They are retractables up front here, so that's a nice option for the car. As far as our seals go, all the seals on this car are in great shape. Weather stripping, the same thing. Nice and soft, there's no rips or tears out of any of it. Looks really good and it's gonna seal up really good from the outside elements. So we'll close this up. Again, door shuts nice and easy. And then we can continue around to the back side of the car. Again, panels are all nice and straight on the car. As we get to the rear, again, you see the nice big chrome bumper that the Chevelle had back then. 
You see the black uh, rubber molding that's on here along with the SS badging on that rubber molding. You can see the black stripes there that I spoke about earlier on the trunk lid. And then of course your uh, rear window in the car here. Again, tinted, no chips or cracks in any of the glass and your bright work molding around that window is in great shape. Even the molding and trim around the bottom edge of your vinyl top is all in good shape. Now on the trunk lid itself, of course, we've got the Chevelle script emblem here, Chevelle by Chevrolet. Uh, down below, we've got that exhaust system that pokes out underneath the rear here, uh, and that is a nice set of chrome slash cut exhaust tips back there. Now we'll open up our trunk. There we go. Obviously, you can see the key does work the trunk lock, the latch itself works, hinges and spring all work for the trunk lid too as it's holding everything up. Again, that same Gobi beige color on the underside of the trunk that you see on the exterior of the car. Inside the trunk, you've got the correct black and aqua trunk spatter paint here. All of the drain plugs are all installed in the trunk pan itself. And again, that's all good metal, all solid. There's no patching whatsoever. All of your weather stripping here and your seals are all in good shape. No rips or tears. They're still nice and soft. Meet together right in the center. And you even have your little rubber bump stops up here on the trunk lid that's going to make everything fit nice and snug back here. So that is your trunk. There we go. And then with the passenger side, again, not a whole lot really to go over here. We've been through everything. We're just kind of checking over all of the panels, all of your trim, again, all nice and straight, polished up really well. The glass itself, no chips or cracks even in the passenger side. Again, the stitching on your vinyl roof here, all very nice, no rips, tears, or frays, or anything on that top. And again, all the way around the bottom of this vinyl top, nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and open our door up on this side. That way you get to see the interior from both sides. And again, just kind of notice no rips or tears in any of your seat upholstery, the carpeting, no rips, tears, or fading there. The dash itself is in great shape, along with all of your door panels and so forth. All of that is in great shape. Same thing with your weather stripping on this side too. Nice and soft. No rips or tears in anything. You're sealed down that quarter window in great shape too. So this side is going to seal up just as well as the other side. Again, we shut the door. It closes with ease. As we come forward now, again, you've got the matching SS396 emblems and badging on this side. And then we'll come around to the front of the car. Now this is where you've got, um, obviously, the 1970 had the quad headlights up here. So you've got your low beams and your high beams, all of which are your traditional sealed beam unit, glass lenses, and again, there's no chips or cracks in any of our lenses there. Of course, the front grille, you've got your SS badging right here in the center. Nice chrome front bumper, no pitting whatsoever there either. Now, as you can see on this steel hood, they've got the hood pin option on it. Again, it is a cowl induction hood and it is a functional cowl induction hood. It's got the vacuum operated flapper back here to open up and let air come in. Now, as far as the glass goes in the windshield, you can see that it has no chips or cracks in that windshield. Your molding around the whole thing is all in great shape too. And has good PA inspection until next year, June. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the hood pins out of here and we'll lift this hood up so we can go over the engine bay here. So with the engine, with the uh, hood up, we can see the underside of the hood. All of the steel supports are in there. It does have the provision for your air cleaner here to go up through and pull that air from that functional cowl. You have the correct seals here on your air cleaner, so everything seals up nice and tight and only brings in cool air from the back side of your hood there as well. So as I was just speaking, that is the correct air cleaner. You can see chrome air cleaner top on there, the correct seal, all the correct uh, stickers and badging. Uh, and then of course, as I mentioned, or will mention here again, it is the correct numbers matching 396 cubic inch big block Chevrolet motor in here. Uh, as far as we can see, it's got the stock air cleaner on it. 
Underneath we got four barrel carburetor. We've got the chrome valve covers there also with breathers as well. As far as the ignition system, slightly upgraded to an HEI ignition. It looks like we've got a set of Excel, yeah, Excel super stock wires here and these are eight millimeter plug wires. That's gonna help deliver the spark to the motor. And as far as the exhaust, we've got those big long tube headers on there that we'll get a better look at once we go underneath the car, but they're dual headers, it's dual three inch exhaust system all the way out the back, including the tailpipes in the car. So you're gonna have a nice throaty sound of this motor. It is power steering, it is power brakes as well. Front disc brakes on this car, drum brakes out on the rear, factory or stock style radiator here. It does have a, uh, looks to be like a six blade flex fan in there. That's going to be what helps cool this thing down along with the shroud in there also. All right, so now we have our 1970 Gobi Bay Chevelle here up on the lift. We're going to go through the underside. As we do with all of our cars, go under or over the entire undercarriage of this car, talking about steering, suspension, braking, drive line, frame floors, wheels, tires, exhaust, you name it. We're going to go over it right now for you. So starting up front, we'll go over the suspension. Of course, we've got the fr front st uh, stock cross member here. That's all factory stuff, and it looks really good condition-wise here. Uh, as far as the uh, control arms up front here, your upper and lower control arms, all factory stamp steel components and all in good shape. Bushings back at the frame are all good, and the ball joints out at the ends, those are all good, and you can tell I've been Grease and maintained very regularly throughout the life of this car. Um, as far as suspension goes also, we've got the sway bar up front here. Good strong sway bar, good thick sway bar. It's got the uh, bushings here at the frame. Those are in good shape. Sway bar and link bushings, those are all good too. Now this is a power steering car. This has the uh, tie rods all up to the front sides here of the A-arms. Unfortunately, you can't see them from the camera angle, but they are all good and straight. All of the ball joints all have the rubber dust boot covers on them to help keep dirt and debris out, keep the grease in, springs and shocks, those are all in good condition too. Uh, as far as the braking system on this car, it's power brakes as well. Disc brakes up front, drum brakes out on the rear, and as you'll see and we'll show you, point them out to you, it does have all the cables run and a functional uh, parking brake all hooked up on this car as well. And out at the ends, let's just go over that right now too. Wheels and tires on this car. It's got all the factory steel rally wheels on it, complete with the beauty rings and the center caps on it, and they are all in great condition. As far as the tires, all BF Goodrich radial TA tires as well. As far as sizes go, we've got 215 70 R15s up front and 235 70 R15s out on the back, and the tread on these tires are in very good condition, so no problems there. Now we'll come in towards the center of the car and we're going to talk about the drive line on this car. Keep in mind this is an all original numbers matching car. So we do have a 396 cubic inch big block Chevrolet motor. As I said, numbers matching on that motor. Back behind that, turbo 400 automatic transmission. As I look at the pan on the transmission as well as on the engine, those are dry, uh, basically leak free. Uh, it also has the uh, flywheel cover on the uh, bell housing here at the bottom. So that's going to help keep anything out from getting in and possibly chipping a tooth or so off of that flywheel. We'll come back a little further. Our cross member here for our transmission. That is good and straight on this car too. It's a tubular style, um, but it's factory style. Goes from one side of the frame rail to the other eye. Other side, it's all bolted in, looks good. Even the mount back here at the tail shaft, that looks good. The seal where your slip yoke slides into, that is nice and dry also. Then of course, we've got our drive shaft. It is a balanced drive shaft, so that's gonna help eliminate any kind of vibrations you might have in your drive line. And then as far as the rear end goes, this is a 12 volt GM rear end. It is a posi unit in here, and it does have a 323 gear ratio in it. Now, as you can see, it's got the sway bar back here also. That's all in good condition. As far as your control arms, the lower ones, 
These are the box control arms you can see on both of those. Again, that was part of your whole Super Sport package. You had the box lower control arms for strength. Um, the upper control arms are just kind of soft, but again, that's the way that they work. Like I said, I already mentioned it's drum brakes on the rear, but again, all of your cables for your emergency brake, intermediates, front cable, and the rear cables going back to the drum brakes are all present, all hooked up, and like I said, it is a functional parking brake. Far as the frame and floors, of course, Chevelle is a full frame car, so the frame rails all the way from front to back, nice and straight on this car, good and square the whole way back. Uh, the floors, again, those are in really nice shape too. You can see all the stamping lines on everything. All of your bracing is intact underneath here. All of your drain plugs intact too where they should be. As far as your fuel lines, those are run right along the frame rail all the way back to the fuel tank. Brake lines, the same thing, right along those uh, the frame rails all the way back. As far as our rear tank goes here, our fuel tank, uh, it is in great condition. Uh, there's no dents or dings in that. All of your mounting hardware, the straps and such, that is all in good condition on this car. And from what we can see underneath here, the trunk floor pan is in great shape too. Now the other, other thing that we can see underneath here right now, of course, is going to be our exhaust system. So we're coming off of that big block 396 with a set of long tube headers. You've got three inch exhaust all the way back. You can see we've got these kind of those shorty style mufflers back here, um, kind of like the, uh, the chambered mufflers, but just short style. Those are in here. And then of course you've got tailpipes also three inch uh, in here mounted and they exit out out the back right underneath that rear bumper. So again, a full three inch exhaust, this car is gonna be very throaty sounding. Um, but it's going to produce a good tone. So that is the underside of our 70 Chevelle.